Hello, and another review. So, uh, what have we got here? We've got the, uh, the X-Cube 2 from Smock, which comes in this box. Um, there it is there. Shiny. <sighs> okay, well, we know the draw by now, don't we? We're going to go down there. I'm going to take it out of the box, even though it's out of the box already. Oh, you get the idea. Uh, and then we'll be back up here, and I'll talk a bit. Okay, cinema. Here we go, then. Here's the X-Cube 2. This is a picture of the X-Cube 2, because this is the box which is massive, so I can't really get that on the camera, so I'm just going to remove the sheath, pop the lid, and there we go, there is the X-Cube 2 in all its um, shininess and, well, yeah, and a complimentary bag of do not eat. So let's take that out, and we'll look at that a bit closer in a minute. What else do we get in the box? Well, we get a uh, removable felt lidy thing, we get another bit of removable plastic, car cardboard, not plastic. We get a rudimentary operation guide. We get this lovely little velvet pouch, which is so black, it's sucking in light. Look at that. There we go. Uh, and we get a USB cable. And we get a bonus complimentary bag of Do Not Eat. So, lovely. Um, the USB cable, and I'll tell you now, and I'm going to tell you again later, um, does not perform charging. It is for firmware upgrades only. So, look at the uh, the velvet bag, which is uh, as black as a certain legislator's soul, and it's sucked in all lights and nothing can escape. So, yeah, let's get that out of the way. We're interested in this bit, which is incredibly shiny. Look at that. Uh, it's just causing absolute merry havoc with all my uh, lighting and things. But anyway, there we go. Maybe some focus. Let's have a look, see at that. There we go. Right, so we can see there the blue reflection of the camera. Um, so we'll ignore that. This will be the battery cover. There we go. So there we can see some magnets that hold the battery cover in place. We can see the fact that they are, uh, shall we say, um, stacked batteries. It's uh, negative, positive, negative, positive. So it's a stacked battery thing. At this point, I'm going to point out something. <clears throat> Let's get this out of the way. This is the back of the box, flattened slightly, and uh, very washed out in white. Now, you can have a quick scan of that if you like, but at no point does it ever say on here that it uses stacked batteries. Okay? Now, if I look in the little tiny user gate, it comes in this envelope. Uh, there you can see there's a quality control thingy. We can see a very black and uh, tactile manual, which is not entirely in English. Oh, it is. I mean, I'm getting confused with something else that has uh, a manual in a uh, different language. But yeah, okay, so there we go. Again, it doesn't say anything in here about the fact that batteries are stacked or cells are stacked. I'm going to keep making this mistake, and Graham Gores is going to absolutely have kittens. But um, yeah. Here's the thing, stacked batteries, you need to make sure they are paired and of the same charge cycles and capacity, everything else, okay? You can't just shove in two completely mismatched batteries, you're going to have real problems if you do that. Bad idea. So, big thumbs down there, Smock, for not telling anybody the fact that you need to use a matched pair of batteries, cells, in this. Anyway, moving to one side then. I happen to have a matched pair of cells. You can see that I've labelled them and everything. They've got B1 on there, so I'm myself, and that one says B2. So, uh, you know, at least I'm doing it okay. Not the best batteries in the world, cells in the world, but um, at this point I'm just doing it on purpose to wind gourds up. Right, we pop that in there, things happen that it comes on, it says the firmware version, it is the latest version, I upgraded it the other day. You pop that on, and that stays on there nice and solid. You can do this with it, and it makes a noise like cocking a gun. <laughs> which is uh, which is fun, like. But uh, there we are, so there's the, bat the button, which is not going to do anything because it's off. So it's the five click on and off, and I apologise immensely for the extreme close-up of this. But you never know, I might better get focus on it. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. That'll do. Power on. There we go. Smock, version 1.07. Welcome. Uh, okay. 
So what do we see on the display there? We see a temperature reading, we see battery meter, we see soft. We see 0 0.24 ohms. Well, that's a lie because there's nothing connected to it. And we see a wattage and voltage. So much like the SX uh, boards you can buy you know, on, on, on mods such as the SX Mini M class, you have power profiles. You have soft, normal, and powerful. That's all down to the preheat stuff. We have a user interface here, uh, which relies on pressing the massive fire button and these plus and minus keys. So I'm going to go for a few of these features. I'm not going to go for a massive amount. Um, it is documented in the manual. For example, if you press plus and minus together, you turn Bluetooth on. Okay. Uh, if you press the fire button and plus, at the same time, you change the strength. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a firmware upgrade. It's added a new profile. Woo. I'm going to have it on normal. Fire button and minus. Memory mode, so you can have profiles. What mode? Temp mode. Memory, yeah, so that cycles through that. So let's have that in uh, temp mode because I've been using a, uh, a temperature control thingamajig on here. And you can do all other sorts of things with these strange arcane... Uh, <clears throat> Should we say button combinations? For example, if I was to power it off now, so five buttons, well, it's not powered off, it's uh, gone into lock mode. Um, and then I'll do that again. I can put it into stealth mode, which means that nothing lights up. Yeah, stealth off, LED off, so it turns off that flashy light thing. LED on. So that's pretty much it. It's all documented fairly much in the manual. Um, so, what else do we need to cover? Well, is that a Spring OD510? Let's try and get that in some sort of light and get some sort of pokey thing in here. It is spring loaded, very stiff, but it is spring loaded. We've got some uh, some screws here. I presume we take the whole thing apart, but I'm not done. On the bottom, we have little holes for battery venting, cell venting, and the C mark, this sort of thing. Um, 160 watt temperature control, and it would help provide some focus, wouldn't it? Let's put that down there, so I've got a nice stable platform. There we go. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0, 160 watts temperature control. Um, I've not actually managed to take this up to 160 watts in temperature control mode, so I don't know if it does do it or not. So, uh, but I, I know I've, I've taken it as far as 80 watts in temperature control mode, and it's been fine there, so that's been okay. Um, an issue here with quality, look at this. There's some plastic over the coming out over the uh, the join here. Now, whether that's there was no sort of plastic film covering issue. You know, you know, some things where you uh, peel off a, a protective plastic layering. I didn't have that when I took it out of the box. So, whether or not this has been pre-opened, well, no, it was shrink wrapped. The whole box was shrink wrapped, so I don't believe it to have been tampered with. So I can just really put that down to a bit of poor quality control. I'll probably sit here and pick it off, but I haven't because I want to show you guys in video. This scuff here is not caused by me. That was as it came. Okay. Um, but other than that, yeah, there's a few scratches here because it's been in, my, in that my pocket, that sort of thing. I've not used the light sucking bag. So there we go. Uh, five turn connection does sit flush. Uh, if actually, if it sits a bit lower than flush, the... Uh, the buttons do sit proud. The screen is on top here. You can change the orientation of it. I've never bothered. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I've had no issues with screwing any device on top here. Everything fits, uh, including this is, well, easily accommodate a 23 millimeter atomizer. You can probably get a 30 mil on here quite happily, to be honest. But here's a sub tank plus, or the original sub tank, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, let's just screw that on there. You know, and the Subtank Plus is a bit of a beast. That fits on there quite nicely. So, yeah, so say 23 mil would probably be about your limit there. Well, maybe a bit more, but there we go. So, yeah, there we go. So, uh, let's now go back to me and I'll vape it and I'll show you the software and that sort of thing. And look, fingerprints already. Ah, grand. Hello. <coughs> so the X-Cube 2 then. 
let's go for the nitty gritty of it all. Right, uh, as you can see, I've got the Smock TF V4 sitting on top here. Um, I'm not going to go into massive depth about it because you would have seen Marco talking about the uh, the tank. Um, but what do I think of it? Um, with the rebuildable section in it, it's okay. But with the um, here it is, with the coils coming to it, it leaks like heck. It really does. So I'm not overly fond of it. But it's okay with the uh, rebuildable section. Anyway, it's enough of that. So there we go then. What's it like to use? Um, it's big. It's very, very hefty. I mean, this is almost an offensive weapon. Um, the button was very weird to me to start with uh, until I tweaked it. You don't have to press it all in. You can press it just by, you can use it just by pressing that or uh, down at the bottom there. You know, you don't have to go, Rah! it's not like a grip strength testy thing. Well, yeah, it works. Um, the menu system, as we saw in the close-up section, is a bit fiddly. But you can use your phone. So, here we go. Tech time. Now, some of you keen viewers may remember I did this before. My first ever Vapor Trails video. Hmm. Anyway, enough of that, so <laughs> here we go again. Is it looking familiar to you? Look at that, look, look, look. Hang on, is that so, uh, uh, yeah, that side, that side. There it is. So, uh, right, what we got here then? You can see me vaping on it. So, uh, yeah, I've got this app currently hooked up to my iPhone and uh, it's all hunky-dory. So you can do little things like this. So it's in temperature control mode. I want to set this to 512 degrees Fahrenheit. It is an atomizer with an NI200 coil. Uh, I can change the variable power, which this is a weird thing because you have to set the power separately. So I want to say, let's say 63.5 watts, right? And then after go that and set the temperature and then click OK. Bizarre. And now nothing happens. Now this is the weird thing I'm having with this software. It doesn't always work. Oh, hang on. Is this coil new? Uh, no, it is not. Okay. It was limiting the temperature though. Which is kind of what you want. But that's that shouldn't be limiting that. I mean, uh, it's. I, I've got I've got issues with this, and I was asking for my password again. It's fiddly, all right. I've set the password as default. Okay, if you ever see me in a world of this, it won't be the six zeros, all right. So let's put it in variable power mode at that, and then set to that. So it's now firing an Ni two hundred coil without temperature control. And you can see there, the, I, this is really hard, I'm trying to look at my monitor and then look at the camera and uh, awkward stuff. Right, so you can see it reached 57.68 watts. Um, so let's put it back into power mode again, uh, temperature control mode. You can change this to uh, Celsius, if you so wish, there's a setting for that. And the temperature limits out. So yeah, that's fine, but... To be honest, I don't think I should be kicking into that that quickly. I'm going to put a different tank on here because I'm not entirely satisfied with it. Let's put all my standard sub tank with bloody nickel coils on it. Oh, I don't know. It's getting used a lot today, this. Right, so I fire it. It obviously knows it's a new coil, so it's not bothered to ask me. Temperature protection straight away is not doing a thing. <sighs> Let's put the variable power down to that. Yeah, that's working. Not as well as I'd like, but 
you see the problem I'm having with this thing here, right? So let's put that down to uh, let's put that to forty watts. So it's far too much for it. At least on anything else, but it's fine on here. So I I, I don't really know what it's doing. Um, temperature control mode again. Five hundred degrees, five hundred twelve degrees Fahrenheit should be adequate. And it is now. So I, it's very hit and miss, okay, people. Anyway, let's soldier on. Let's go to these settings here. So you can change the name of it. I can set the password. I can change the temperature to Fahrenheit or Celsius. So I'm going to leave it on Fahrenheit. Charging alert at 20%. I can set the LED color. So currently it was white. You saw that, didn't you? You saw that. Let's have a, let's have a red. Is it going to do it? Well, yeah, it's gone red, but you probably want to see that on the camera. It's more of a pink. So that's uh, let's go for something a bit more obvious. Let's go for a Marco defeating green. There we are. That's now green. And it works. And that's also now far too hot for it, so I don't know what's going on. I can go for a little sort of a color cycle thing. Sometimes when it works, I'm going to drop the temperature down because 400 and oh, that'll do. Right, so you'll see now when I'm firing it, it changes color, and it's it's a it's a gimmick. It really is nothing more than a gimmick. Uh, if I go to that one, I can't remember what that one does. That sort of smoothly cycles between them. So there we go. Um, yeah, so you've got other stuff in here. You can have a plan. So I could say on Sunday I only want to have a certain amount of puffs, this sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> vaping records, you can see the usage of it. This only records when it sees it on Bluetooth, so it doesn't pull all the data through all the time, which is a bit poor. So you can see all the puffs I've just taken. Um, it's a fair amount. But according to this, I've not taken any since, oh, well, that's all I've taken today. Hang on. Today, yeah, because that's what it's set this month. Oh, look, and I get graphs up and things. Yeah, that's all great. Um, da -da 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 -da. Right, there's one little thing I want to rant about here. We saw here, it said earlier, atomize with NI200 coil, yeah? Click on that. Atomize with TI coil. I can't select it. Excuse the thing bounce up and down. Apparently, uh, iTunes wants my attention, but uh, whatever. Um, yeah, I can't select it. So if you go into, is it settings? Vapor up graduation. Upgrade, grad, gradation? Okay. Vapor up gradation, I presume that's supposed to be. I click on that. Oh, I can unlock titanium wire control for an extra 49 cents. Sod off, smock. I've already paid for the device. I am not going to pay to unlock a, div a feature that should be there already, okay? So, really not happy about that. Um, yeah. That's enough of that. Look, I've spent the money this cost, all right? I don't expect to have to pay to unlock a feature on the device. Right, so that was a look at the, uh, the, so the software part there and uh, a little bit of a rant there from me about the... Uh, the cost of the upgrade, which I think is uh, a little bit whatever. Right, it's another day now. I mean, this, this review's taken me quite a lot of time to put together. Um, I just want to show you guys what this can do. Now, I've got on here a dripper with nickel coils on it and uh, 0.06 ohms, and I've got it 100 watts and 520 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that does produce. So I'd like to wrap this up really. Um, as I said, this has taken me a long time to put together this, this review. I, I do like that contrary to what you, uh, the impression you may have got in the, uh, in the video there previous. Um, I do like the device. I think it's, I think it's good.
But do I think it's great? No, I don't. It's uh, it's relatively reasonably priced. I think there's a few issues with the quality control here. You know, as I pointed out in the close-up section, the uh, the bits of plastic coming across the um, the joins there, the scuff on the button, which I'm not fond of, and that was out of the box. Um, yeah, the stacking batteries issue, that is an issue, but as long as you're aware of that, you should be okay, and as long as you are safe with your batteries, you should be fine. Um, the software on... Now, here's the thing. I've tested the software on both Android and iOS. On Android, it's very, very buggy. Um, I've recently got a new Android phone, and I cannot get this to connect to it at all. On the iOS device, it's fine. Uh, I've got an Android tablet, but it won't connect to that either. So, it connected to my Galaxy S3 fine, uh, it doesn't connect to my new phone. So I think some work needs to be done there on the, uh, on the software. You don't need to have the software to access the main features of this device. You only need the software for the real, the beauty features, you know, like changing the colour of the LED, that sort of thing. But you can change all the temperature coefficients and whatever from, from the device itself. Uh, you can do all of that. So, whilst I might have ranted about the uh, unlocking of the titanium coils, you can kind of get around that by changing the temperature coefficient in the software or on the device. Okay, so there is a workaround. Um, the, just the TI setting is obviously there for convenience. Okay, but if you look, if you go to Steam Engine um, and look up the temperature coefficient of the wire you're using you can input the value into this, so you can kind of get around that, okay? I can't say yes, go out and rush out and buy one, but I can't really say avoid it either. It's, I, I, I like the advice, I like using it, it's, it's a good size for me, if you've got smaller hands, you probably won't like it, so give it a miss, but if you've got decent sized hands, I say decent, I don't, I don't mean that, what I mean is, if you've got large hands, you're, 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 you're gonna find the device quite comfy. Uh, once you get used to the fire button, because that is the big learning curve of this. If you've got bent little hands, like my missus, no, it's too big to grip. There we go then, so uh, that is the Smok X Cube 2. A good device, I feel, but with some problems. Ta-ta, I'm there, honestly I am here. <laughs> Ta-da!